Hi, and welcome to TouchView Interactive. Today we're going to take a look at our new Gen 3 series panel. This is our Ultra series panel. So lots of new feature updates. We've added Android version 9. We've updated the processing speed. We've also added some other feature sets to our toolbars that we'll take a look at as well. So several different sizes to be able to choose from, from a 98 inch, the 86, I'd say the 75 and the 65. Those are probably our most popular for K-12 education. Uh, of course, we have some other stand options for you as well. So if you want a mobile cart, that's going to allow you to some flexibility to wheel that from location to location, rearrange the classroom. I can also put my panel into tabletop mode with one of our stands as well. So that's going to allow you in a STEM lab or a media lab to go ahead and have multiple students engaged on some of our interactive games. Now, we also offer the optional Windows PC. So that's available in a Core i5 or a Core i7. You can hardwire that directly to your network or you can connect it via Wi-Fi and it's going to hang off your network just like any other current device would. And then of course we have all of our Android side inputs, uh, plenty of HDMI inputs as well as we've added USB-C port connectivity to the front of the panel now as well with that. So again, on the front inputs, that's what they look like right there. That's where you're going to find that USB-C input. So what's nice about that is if I have one single cable on a MacBook or a Chromebook, that's going to give me audio, video, charging capabilities as well as touch control. Uh, of course, HDMI input and then that supplied USB touch cable, that's going to give you 20 points of touch control as well over your own PC laptop or Mac laptop. And then just a couple of uh, USB 3.0 ports if you want to maybe plug in a thumb drive or anything of that nature directly to the panel also. So uh, again, lots of ways to change inputs on the panel. It does come with a standard remote. There's another video on our YouTube page uh, that covers this in depth with all the buttons. Uh, with that, go check that out if you want some further details on the remote. So that's gonna allow you to change inputs that way. Uh, I can also, by using the front of the buttons directly on the uh, panel, that's gonna mimic some of the buttons on the remote control. So simple power on and power off button. It's also gonna allow me to put it in a standby mode. That home button is always gonna take me back to the Android side of the panel. So if you ever get lost on what input you're on, that's a good way to kind of get your basis and go back to that home page. The back button, that's always gonna take you back to the last page that you were on. Uh, that little gear or cog wheel, that's another way to pull up all of your input settings and make some changes that way. And then of course, just simple volume up and volume down control with that. So again, I do have that optional Windows PC, so that's a nice option uh, to have that on board so I don't have any cables connected or anything uh, to have a hardwired device. So again, that's gonna allow me to run any kind of uh, video conferencing software, access your Google Classroom, or currently utilize any software that you're using in your business environment or your educational environment with that. So another way to change inputs is this little sidebar tool over here on the side of my panel. If I expand that out, if I hit that home button, that's gonna do the same thing as this home button here on the front of the panel as well as the remote. So that's gonna take me to the Android operating system side of the panel. So this is truly what handles all my on-screen touch control functions, my menu settings, and a couple of pieces of software that come pre-installed on the Android side. So the first thing we'll take a look at is our SWRITE software. So you're gonna notice right away that I have this toolbar down below. So that's gonna allow me to manipulate several things. So if I select my pen tool, I can go in and change between uh, line weighting thickness, I can change uh, colors if I want to. And if I grab this hand tool, that's gonna to allow me to have multi-touch on my SWRITE software. So again, all of our panels feature that 20 points of touch, so that means you can have multiple students up here writing, erasing, interacting at one time. It also recognizes what I call gesture erasing. So if I wanna kinda of clear out my whiteboard, I don't even need to change tool sets. If I just flatten my hand, it automatically turns it into an eraser for me. So very easy, very simple. But then if I grab that hand tool in my toolbar one more time, now I can put it into what I like to call infinite canvas mode. So now I can kinda of pinch and zoom and bump that content up off the screen. So again, if I wanna grab that pen tool and maybe I'm in class or a meeting, I'm taking some bullet point list of notes, just uh, use that hand tool. You can bump that content right up off the screen and then just continue writing. So you really do have this infinite canvas that you can populate all kinds of content with. I can add multiple pages to this as well. Over here down on the corner, if I hit the plus button, that's gonna allow me to go ahead and add a secondary page. Uh, and again, on here, I could maybe populate this with some math problems, for example, but then I can always jump back to that first page that we were working on. So a couple other features, if I select these little four boxes of my toolbar, that's where I can import video clips, 
I can import pictures if I want to. I can even go into split screen writing mode, or now we can show up to three separate screens so I can have uh, multiple students engaged at the same time. So I can come down here and select maybe uh, that we have the white team over here and they're working on some content. Uh, and over here we got the red team. So again, that's a great way to just get students engaged and get up to the panel and be able to populate some content. If I wanna erase this out, I'll just swipe this little toolbar down here and that just kind of dry erase wipes everything out. And then down on the corner, if I wanna exit out of the split screen mode, if I uh, just choose the little circle with the arrow, that's gonna allow me to say, yeah, I wanna go ahead and uh, exit out of that and go back to my whiteboarding. A few other things I can do is I can always add any kind of random shapes or patterns along with that. And I can go in and change background settings. So maybe I want to select a different color or better yet, maybe I want to uh, add a template that we give you some pre-built templates in here. So again, you can pick any of that kind of content uh, and you can also add your own templates as well. Just simply load those to a thumb drive or copy those over to the Android side of the panel uh, and be able to set those as a background for it as well. So there's a few ways to be able to save your content. One way to do that is if I select this little QR code, that's gonna export that out as an image file. So now I can scan that with my tablet or my mobile device phone and be able to grab all that whiteboarding content instantly onto my device and take it with me. If I select this little uh, hamburger menu here down in my left toolbar, that's gonna allow me to go in and maybe save that. I can save it directly back to a thumb drive if I want to or directly to the Android side of the panel. If I, I can select, uh, interactive whiteboard file. So that's gonna allow me to edit this file later if I want to, uh, flatten PDF image or just a PNG file. Another way I like to save content is by tying this directly to my cloud storage. So if I go in and maybe give this a custom file name if I wanted to, and again, I can select either an interactive whiteboard or just a flattened PNG image. And that's going to allow me now to sync that directly to my Google Drive or Microsoft OneDrive account so I can save that content and share it back as well. So lots of flexibility, really just meant to jump in, take some quick notes and be able to save and share that content off. So if I hit the back arrow here, that's one way to just go ahead and say, nah, I don't wanna save, I'm just gonna exit back to the Android home screen. Another nice feature built into the TouchView panel is going to be our eShare wireless screen sharing. So this is gonna allow you to show up to nine devices on the screen at any one time. And I can actually have up to 50 student devices connected at one time if I choose to. So this works for any operating system. So it doesn't matter if I'm a PC user, a Mac user, maybe I wanna screen share my iPad, my iPhone, and also Chromebooks are supported with this. So pretty easy to get connected. We've actually put a built-in user guide directly in with the software. Now I do recommend that you install the eShare app. You can find that at eShare.app. Uh, and that's gonna allow you to download our sender application. It's gonna give you a little more flexibility on some of the features of that. Now this is also meant to be an in-network solution. So again, uh, my device needs to be connected to the same network that my panel is connected on. So for example, here in my studio, I'll grab my laptop. Uh, I have that eShare app that's installed on my laptop here, and I'm just gonna go ahead and connect. So with our latest version of this, I now have two options. I can either share what's on my laptop directly to the panel, or I can actually mirror what's on the panel out to student devices, for example. So in this case, I'm just gonna go ahead and share my screen. Now I'm running this in what we call acceptance or permissions mode. So that's gonna allow the teacher to either accept or reject a student casting their device directly to the panel. So now I'm wirelessly screen sharing my laptop directly to the panel. But what's great about this is not only do I have that wireless screen sharing, but I also have the ability to go ahead and have touch control capability over my device as well. So that's a great way to pull up any existing lesson plan that you want, screen share it directly to the panel and have that full touch control capability with that. Uh, I have a pretty robust network here, so that's even gonna allow me to uh, play YouTube videos if I want, uh, not getting any audio sync or lag with the video, and I can even take it full screen if I choose to. And audio is also going to follow from your PC or your Mac laptop with that. So that's a great option to be able to go ahead and screen share any type of device uh, and pull up your existing content. As a matter of fact, if I go ahead and pull up my tablet here, that's gonna allow me to go ahead and screen share another device. So I'll just go ahead and say, I wanna allow my tablet. And now I can say that I wanna go ahead and share that. And you'll see how it goes into a split screen mode there. 
So very easy to select each one of these. So if I want to take this full screen uh, and focus on my tablet, for example, pull up a web page, I can do that and then minimize that back down again and then say, hey, I want to go back over here and focus on my laptop. So another great option if I expand my toolbar is maybe while I'm screen sharing my laptop, I want to grab that pen annotation tool so I can highlight and mark up any kind of content. So you'll see down here in the lower bottom of my screen, that's going to allow me to go in and change my marker thickness. And again, I can change color with that. So now while I'm screen sharing my laptop, now I can mark up and annotate and highlight any kind of content that I want to. And I'm still going to get that multi-touch capability with that. It's also going to recognize that gesture erasing just the same way that we looked at before. And I can have a couple of options to save that off. So again, I can select that QR code if I want to and go ahead and export that out that way. Or I can just go ahead and save it back directly to, again, a thumb drive or back to my Android side of the panel. To simply exit out of that annotation overlay, again, select that circle with the arrow and that's going to allow you to go ahead and clear out your markups with that. So again, you can have up to nine devices showing on the screen at any one time. It doesn't matter what type of operating system device it is uh, with our wireless screen sharing software. So if I go ahead and have back to the home page, that's going to go ahead and disconnect me and take me back to the Android home page again. A few other features that we've added on this side toolbar. Now, again, this toolbar is always going to be there and available to you. It doesn't matter what input you're on or if I have my device plugged in and hardwired. If I'm on the Android side of the panel, you're always going to have that toolbar there. So we already know what the home button does, it takes us over to the Android side. But if I, select that, if I select that little computer monitor right there, that's another way how I can access my different inputs of the panel. So again, you're going to have to be, to be able to preview your sources if you want to. So if I have multiple devices plugged in, I can go in and preview any of those sources that I have with that. So that's a nice feature that we've upgraded. Uh, I can also go in and again, select this four square menu. That's going to bring up some utilities. So again, we have uh, countdowns, we have calculators, uh, we have a voting feature built into this. I can even do screen capture in real time if I want to, or maybe I want to go into screen record mode. So with this, I would need a microphone. So in this case, I have one of our touch view wire or web cameras. So it's just kind of perched up on top of my panel there. So that would allow me to pick up the audio, but the screen capture and record feature is going to capture what's, uh, what's on the panel at that time. So that's a nice feature that we've added and built in with that as well. Uh, and again, we've also added things like uh, stopwatch. And if I want to lock out my panel, I can lock the touch. Uh, and again, I can spotlight and highlight anything. So that's kind of cool to be able to maybe focus on one area of the board and not show any other content with that. A few other features, if I select that little gear, that's going to bring me to my system settings. So again, this is where I can select and connect to a wireless network or depending on if you're hardwired, you'd be able to see that network, change your date and time. I can change the wallpaper background if I choose to. Uh, you're going to have options for security settings so you can set a pin code so that uh, nobody can get into your panel with that. So that's a nice feature as well as power settings. So I can go in and I can schedule a standby time with that. And then the about information that's going to allow you to maybe name your panel by classroom location or conference room location and just gives you some other basic information about the Android operating system and uh, firmware versions that you're running. So again, I can go in and also be able to lock out the settings. Now, uh, I had actually someone the other day who uh, asked me about, hey, how do I lock out inputs? Maybe I want to go ahead and I want to lock inputs so nobody can go in and be able to plug in any type of device. So if I wanted to lock out one of my HDMI inputs, I can simply lock that out and that source is going to be deactivated. I can rename my sources as well. So if I want to give it a custom name, uh, like an Apple TV input or anything, I can rename my input sources directly with the rename source feature. Again, we already talked about the pin annotation tool. Again, that's just going to allow you to mark up and annotate and highlight anything directly onto the panel with that. And again, I can just close and clear out of that. And then the last thing we'll take a look at is Typically on an Android phone, this is how I'm going to be able to see all of my background processes and what apps are open. So if I want to kind of clear all those out, I can just do that with one simple button. The file folder menu, that's how you're going to gain access to all of your files 
and folders directly on the Android operating system. Now again, I do have that PC installed. So in that regard, I actually have two operating systems. I have that PC side of the panel and I have the Android side of the panel. So this is where you're also gonna see things like thumb drives if you insert one of the thumb drives uh, and you can always uh, get access to your files with the file folder menu. Uh, and then over here, off to the far hand right side, that's where you're going to find some other various applications installed. We do have a basic browser that's built into the Android side. I actually like to link this to my Google account so I can access all my Google Drive files, slides, docs, uh, anything as well. So that's a great option to be able to have just that built in uh, web browser directly into the panel. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna jump back over to the PC side of the panel and we can take a look at the few features uh, on the PC side. Again, running Windows 10, Windows 11, you have an option with TouchView to where we can install Windows for you, or if you're doing a larger rollout in a school district or conference rooms, you can install your own version of Windows. And again, it's gonna hang off your network just like any other device would. So a few pieces of software that come included. One thing that I really like, and again, we talked about that uh, tabletop mode, is with our game zone. So this is a quick way that you can engage some students. So maybe I'm picking a two player today and I wanna do some even numbered math. And then maybe over here, we're gonna work on some Earth's atmosphere content. So again, all of our lesson plans are built on touch. It's gonna to tell you if you're right or wrong. Uh, so that's a fun way to engage your students. And again, I can split this into four zones. So if I am in that tabletop mode, that's gonna allow you to be able to have multiple students engaged all around the panel as well. So cool option to be able to use that. Another piece of software that comes included with your TouchView panel. Again, there's no subscription fees. It is in perpetuity as long as you own the panel. So you're not gonna have to budget for any annual licenses or anything, is our Mimeo Connect software. So this is purely a web-based solution. So I can be on any device. It doesn't matter if I'm on a Chromebook, a PC, a Mac, my tablet, as long as I can launch a browser, I can gain access to my content with this. So again, we've tied this in with Canvas, Schoology, Blackboard, so whatever LMS system that you wanna be able to utilize. So in this case, I'm just gonna log into my account. And now that's going to bring me to my dashboard. So this is where I can find my lessons that I've created. Uh, I can search by lesson plan type, so I can filter by different types of subject matter, filter by grade levels, even by state standards. And you can see that we have thousands of lessons that are available online where you can go in and just use it as is, or you can edit any of these lesson plans as well. So maybe in this case, I wanna go ahead and, and just uh, do a quick teach lesson. So I can import my class rosters if I want to, but in this case, I'm just gonna say, no, I just wanna teach in class. I do have the ability also to do a conference call or a webinar where I bring my students in. So if I have students that are remote learning, this is a great option. And now I can just go ahead and say, I wanna present. And that's gonna bring up that six digit code. So if students just go to that web address, mimeoconnect.com, type in that six digit code, and then that's gonna allow them to join you, whether they're in the classroom or in a distance learning situation. So I'll close out of that. Now that's gonna bring me into just a basic whiteboard here. So you're gonna see your participants over on the far right-hand side. You can always minimize that back down. But again, same whiteboarding features where I can go and change uh, my pen and brush and line weighting thickness if I want to. Uh, and maybe today, let's say, we're gonna talk about planets in class. So I can also go in and not only use it as a whiteboard, but I can import uh, text if I want to. I can also add YouTube media, all kinds of images, web links. I can link it to my OneDrive or my Google Drive if I want to. So maybe today in class, uh, we're just gonna pull up some images about planets. And that's gonna allow me to do a filtered search for any kind of images. So now if I select a few of these, I can just drop those directly into my interactive canvas. That's gonna allow me to resize these, place these wherever I want to in my layout. And I can add multiple pages as I start to build this out. So again, you can build out this content ahead of time if you want to, or I can just kind of build it on the fly and build out content. So this is a great piece of software. Again, all included, tons of lesson plans, no software subscription with that. So if you wanna join us and see more, I'll be doing a lot of tips and tricks videos uh, over the next uh, period of time, but you can always click that live virtual demo and be able to join me directly here in the studio and pick a date and time. Hope this was helpful, take care. Mm -hmm.